issues I will monitor the chat at the same time and hopefully everything should be going well so yeah apologies for, for the lack of, adver of promotion o on this <laughs> it's my first so yeah hopefully hopefully you will be able to join or watch a recording anyways uh, because this will be a multi-part uh, stream for sure because there, there are so many things to do as I will explain uh, very soon so let me just check the last time that everything is going well and yeah I shall uh, I shall get started so the idea for this next hour is to is to is to implement a real world uh, backend. So real world is actually like a medium clone, if you want, as I explain here. And they have a set of uh, API specs, and which uh, guarantees that all of the different implementations for backends and frontends have this common contract. And you can basically, as you can see, you know, with this uh, nice animation here, you can see that you can basically mix and match them. Oh, okay, I think there is technical issue, so let me double check first. See, there is sound and camera issue, so let me just check that. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Okay, so the camera seems okay. Let me check the audio capture. Yeah, see everything. Hmm. So just checking with my colleague. Uh, so what's going on? Let's find out. Um, no, just sending here. Yeah screenshot of this to my colleague and we'll see let's see let's wait uh, just to make sure the sound is very low okay so I need to speak louder I think and maybe closer to my mic uh, okay, so there might be an issue on one side, but it seems to work fine on YouTube, and some people are in the chat. Yeah. Okay. So let me, yeah, let, let me take some time, and uh, I don't have any jokes uh, in stock, but <laughs> for now, if, if some people can hear me, um, correctly then then I will just uh, you know repeat what, what I was starting to say I am very quiet okay so maybe let me let me switch microphones and we'll see if that's better uh, let does it work better is it better with the sound now sorry again that's my first stream so it would have been a bit too naive to expect that it would go smoothly uh, so I change the microphone uh, and hopefully you can all hear me better. I mean, or I can shout for one hour. That's also an option. Uh, oh, it was better before someone told me. Okay, so let me let me switch again to this one then. Yeah, I'm not sure what else I can do. It's usually okay. Okay, okay, okay. So back to the microphone, monitoring the chat just to make sure it's uh, people can hear me well. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm gonna wait a few more minutes and just to make sure. Oh yeah, back to normal. All right. All right. So okay, let's uh, let's start then. Let's start and uh, if there are any other issues, please let me know and I will try to to troubleshoot it with, with my colleague because I'm still a, a big newbie in that area. But anyway, uh, so sorry for the 
for the little issues I've had so far, but hopefully we can uh, we can continue without it. So as I was telling, the idea of uh, real world is to show uh, realistic application examples, and you have uh, obviously two parts: one is the back end, one is the front end, and they share a common contract, so the API specs. And the application we are gonna build today, I mean only the backend part, and we will only start as well, is a medium clone. So you can, you know, it's like a, a blog post that you can write, you have accounts, uh, you have articles, etc., etc. And so, yeah, we'll start from scratch and hope, uh, obviously it, uh, I won't be able to do everything in one hour, but uh, we can start, you know, at least setting up uh, the project and uh, and see how we can use. So I decided to pick Golang because uh, it's one uh, one of the supported languages uh, in the new 4 j stack, you know, with the drivers. So that will also be the occasion to, to learn a little more about uh, the basic driver concepts because we will basically persist the data in neo 4 j That's also the idea. All right, so let's have a look. Uh, so if you go to uh, realworld.io, you will actually re you will actually be redirected uh, to this repository and uh, then you will see so you will see all the uh, official examples here and then what we're going to do is create a new one but but before before going forward let's uh, as you can see there is a link to the api specs uh, which are actually and then you will find the starter kit etc etc and uh, you will see actually at some point so i'm just gonna go fast forward on this you will be able to import a postman collection and there is all the api calls uh, that it uh, that we must implement so that's why i told you in one hour i won't be able to do everything but you can see like there is a you know it's per, per category you have this authentication things articles comments favorites so all all the kind of features you would expect from uh, you know from a from a platform like Medium, or in that, in that case, they called it Conduit, which is uh, the clone of Medium. All right, so yeah, so let's get started. We'll probably pick the first one and see how far we can go with it, and maybe maybe start other one if we uh, if we don't run into any unexpected issues. Uh, so for now, we'll just you know just start from scratch, really. I will just create a, a folder for my for my project. Uh, so I will try to stick to our naming conventions because uh, my colleague uh, Adam Cowley uh, started also real world examples uh, in uh, in our new 4G examples GitHub organization. So that's why I'm trying to stick to that uh, convention. So oh, I've got several colleague examples. So here we go, and then I will, uh, you know, just uh, in the project like uh, one would do, which oops, okay. And the repository will be uh, at some point uh, this one. And all right, so I've got all the the minimum requirements at this point. I've got a go mo go mode for the go module stuff, which is why I can you know if you if you've done some GoLang in the past, you know there was this go path when you were supposed to clone projects. So go when you would go get a project, it would put it in the go path. That's not needed anymore, so you can basically create a project wherever you want. So from now on, we will mostly be navigating between uh, Goland, but you can use any ID or text editor. So just just pick whatever you're comfortable with. In my case, I'm more familiar with the JetBrains product. So yeah, that's why I'm just picking it out of habit. So let's let it load so there is not much to load at this point you know we just have this uh, this basic um, this basic project nothing is in there it detects its go modules so far so good uh, what we will want to do uh, actually is also make sure we can write tests and at some point i will also add a new forge driver but uh, let's take uh, things one step at a time so for this i like to use uh, ginkgo and gomega so Ginkgo is a custom test runner, which brings you, you know, this familiar structure with a uh, describe before each, after each, and, 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 and specs, which is not the default structure, you know, the built-in testing structure of Golang is not like this. You just have tests that you can run. There is no, no hooks like before each, after each, etc. So that's why I, I like to use Ginkgo. And usually I, goes, I use Gomega with it. 
uh, which is uh, yeah, basically the companion of Ginkgo, which allows you to express uh, to express some assertions like expect this this value is equal to another value. But we'll see that in a concretely in a moment. So let's wait for it to download the dependencies. All right, cool. So yeah, we have our Go mode. Now it should be a bit less empty than before. So for now it's all indirect dependencies because I'm not using them yet. And I will probably, uh, you know, start simple. Uh, so I will, I will need, I will need this. I will have a main method just to start my application. So because it's a main method, it needs to be in the main package and a main function. And what I will do, so I will not use any fancy stacks here. I'm just going to use um, the built-in HTTP server and serve the APIs as described by Postman. But I won't go too far in, the, in main. I will quickly switch to, to a separate package for, for the function itself so I can also test drive it. But I want to show you the, the basic structure of the project be, be, before we move uh, forward with, uh, with the handlers, basically, as they call it. So I can use uh, so the standard HTTP package. I can use this uh, new servmux, which gives me a server, and then I can define handlers and start it, and then it will uh, it will start serving on the on the port I define. So here I go with a uh, with a server. Then uh, I can so. I can do things like handle func. I can tell you on I can tell it on which path I want to serve content, and handler will be the function that takes a response writers, write responses, and requests. So I can read I can read stuff from the incoming request and react accordingly. But we can we can check that. Uh, we'll see that in a moment. So for now I'm ju I'm just gonna do you know, empty empty values and uh, we'll see we'll see what I do with it. I will just, you know, do the basic thing. Then I can do listen and serve. I will run basically on for now local local host on the, on the three thousand port. It could be it could be anything else. It could be a random port. We can, we can revisit that later anyway. It just to give you know a feel of uh, what it looks like. So it can fail for now. I'm going to be quite simplistic with my uh, error handling. So let's do and let's move this so we have a little more space. And that the infamous uh, if error not nil, then do something in Go. So that's something we quite repeatedly type. Uh, but you know there are improvements in the in the pipeline for for Golang regarding to uh, regarding error management. So it's not the end of the world. For now, I'm going to be quite brutal. Something you usually don't do, except maybe in main method li like here. But usually you don't do it like that. For for now, for now, okay. That gives me a structure. That gives me a feel of what the whole application will look like. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to write all the handle functions here because it would end up uh, being a very, very long program and that's not something we want to do. So let's look, let's look at the first, uh, the first endpoint we need to implement. And hopefully that would lead us to, to, to Neo4j. So yeah, it, it would make sense to probably start with a register. So as we can see in Postman here, uh, so I will be able to actually execute it later once I, I configure it properly with a URL, but I can do that uh, a bit later. So there is it's a post method on a slash users endpoint, which is so far so good. Uh, what kind of headers do we have? So it's uh, okay, it's sending request in JSON, and the body looks like an object with a main top level key which would be user and user would have would be a, an object with three properties all right sounds good and that's where we're gonna we're gonna store stuff in uh, we're gonna store stuff in your 4 j all right so um yeah let's get started so we've seen it's on users and here I want I want to move this because I don't I don't want to implement everything in main in main.go so that wouldn't be very convenient so let's uh, let's move maybe to um, pkg users and let's have I don't know let let's have uh, something like register register.go or something you know I'm going with the flow <laughs> we'll see if that if that makes sense. 
And for now, uh, we can have uh, so this function here. So let's do this. Uh, we can have so public. So public or private is based on the case. So it starts with an upper R, which means the function will be visible to all the packages that import uh, that one. And how does it look like? Let's look at the signature real quick. Um, we want writer and request. So as I told you, writer is which it what enables us to uh, write some stuff in the response. You know, response code, uh, content type, etc. And um, yeah, and also request to read incoming stuff from the request. All right. So far, so good. And you know what? I'm not going to write the implementation right away. I would like to test drive it a little bit. So let's start also with the test. Register test. Cool. That's cool. And a common practice is to use a underscore test uh, suffix for the package. That way you, don't, you cannot access any internals to users because you're not in the same package te technically. So it's a good way to, to test your boundaries between uh, what's actually public so you would basically the test would consume what can be consumed like any other any other client of that package so that's a, that's a good practice usually so you cannot really access the internals but before i go too forward uh, there is something else i need to do i think i need to yeah so that will be fun because i'm not sure i have it here but if i go to this package users. There is a translation step needed for Ginkgo because Ginkgo is not a standard test runner like in uh, li like the standard Golang test runner. So there is a, there is some kind of uh, plumbing needed needed to be done just to translate the Ginkgo test structure to a standard uh, Golang test structure so that the Golang test runner can, und can understand what we're trying to run. Uh, so currently I don't I don't have it here, so let me just check real quick. There, there is a CLI that uh, that uh, one can use, uh, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. So Ginkgo Bootstrap, and it will generate the file for you. But you can also write it manually. It's always uh, the same uh, the same code we write uh, for every package. So let me just check real quick. Um, so if I take anything, I'm just taking another example. Uh, let me check real quick if that's my fault. I should. I will find it somewhere. Yes, these kind of things. And by convention, uh, so the, what the CLI would generate would be something like uh, the name of the package. So empty file, please. Okay, almost. Let's try again. And would be the name of the package, which would be users. It would be then suite and test. All right. And so I would put this in the test package as well. And what it does, so I'm just going to copy paste it from, from, from another project I have, uh, is usually always the same thing, which is this. Uh, so what it does here uh, is just register it's uh, the own, you know, the custom Ginkgo test structure to the test runner, so that the test runner, so basically, to the test runner will run this, and Ginkgo then will take over and ex and detect what uh, Ginkgo specs are needed to to be run. So yeah, so, so that just that maybe the minor minor drawback of using Ginkgo versus the standard uh, Go testing library is you have to do this. But again, uh, I didn't have the CLI at hand, but otherwise you can do something like you go to the package, you do Ginkgo Bootstrap and it will generate this. So just to make sure, uh, let's start with uh, something maybe, so go Ginkgo Describe. Let's start with the Describe block and let's reformat this a bit. I, at first, I want just to make sure that my setup is correct, so I'm going to start with a very, very dummy test. Um, so it's a user package. And the rest will probably look very familiar, whether you've done Golang or not before. Uh, you know, that's a kind of, uh, of testing structure we can see in Ruby and in many other frameworks in many languages. 
and usually what I like to do is uh, you know just import yeah do this so the package prefix is removed uh, which is a dot import we can also rename it to something else but that's what I like to do then we can have a simple test for now temporary just to make sure my setup is okay and once I know it's okay I will move on to the actual implementation uh, should perform addition you know something something hopefully that shouldn't break and that we're going to use Gomiga as well so so far we've seen uh, Ginkgo which allow us to have this describe uh, you know this nested uh, test suites so before and after hook and also you know this uh, this familiar testing structure basically and Gomiga as I was telling at the beginning allow us to perform uh, to perform some uh, some assertions like uh, expect for instance, so again, I also like to add the dot import alias on this one, so I, I have directly, you know, what I want to read and not some extra noise with the packages. So I don't know. Let's do something uh, very interesting. So you have two, not two, or two, not two, and you know, I'm not a native speaker, so I never know, you know, when it comes to negation, which one to pick. But in that case, it's not going to be negation anyway. So you have the two function, or not two, or whatever variant. And then inside you add another matcher, and it's all in the Gomiga package. That's why it's interesting to do the dot import, so you don't see Gomiga dot expect uh, to Gomiga dot equal. You know, it's a bit easier to read. So let's see. Um, so what happened? So let me go back to to here. What happened if I run all the tests? Hopefully, uh, the GoLang standard runner will pick up. Uh, we'll, we'll let uh, Ginkgo take over and, take and Ginkgo will generate a nice little display of the tests. So let's wait, it's a first run so it needs to download some things. And hopefully it will be okay. And okay, the test passes as you can see. So it's uh, basically you have a summary per package and uh, it passes. And hopefully if I do a mistake, it will also report that mistake. In some details yes okay so it's a bit verbose but it's quite detailed it's quite nice okay you can see that one plus one is not equal to three so we've all learned something today at least i did now i know to add numbers which is <laughs> a great step forward but no uh jo joking aside yeah so the setup the setup is correct that's nice uh so now what do i want to do um so what i want to do let's let's have a look back at postman so we have this um, we have this structure posted to slash users. Um, so yeah, let's let's just keep that around. Just remember, it will be useful for my test. So it should should be yeah, should register or something. The structure is like this. Uh, so what do we want to do? We will, we can probably uh, start a server. We can do something like this. We will see what, what's the best way forward. Um, but yeah, so we'll have a register function here. There is a nice uh, HTTP test package, by the way, which will allow me to uh, inspect the response afterwards. So that will give me some response writer that I, I can pass to, uh, you know, test response writer that I can pass to my server. Then I want to be able to somehow call users.register. I need this response writer. And then I need to send a request. And so let's see. Let's see how I can do that in a simple way. I don't think there is. Oh, yeah, I can do a new request. That's nice. HTTP test package is really comes in handy. Uh, so let's see, let's see, let's see. I don't remember everything, but uh, what is this target request? I need is a path. Yeah, makes sense. So it's a path we want, which could be probably something like this. And then we can do a simple reader. Uh, so let me think for a second. Strings reader, new reader. Yeah, for now we'll keep it simple. So that will be my request body. 
that will read some JSON. So it's a bit ugly to do it like this, but for now it's the simplest. Uh, so because I will have a big string here, so let's take uh, this. Let's take this, and you know, let me just keep this around. So I'm just gonna do it with the JSON edition, JSON fragment. Yeah, so at least I, I do, I'm not, you know, polluted with all the escapes. So I can't see what's going on. Uh, so yeah, let's example.com. Okay, very, not very inspired for the examples, but hopefully that should do the trick. So we have a request by the we call register. So okay, that can be gone now. Uh, yeah, let me try to have it to have everything on on one screen. Okay, so we call register, and then we can expect a few things. So let's let's look at Postman again. So what does the test look like? Uh, response contains user property. What else? Uh, user email property, username property. Okay. So there is a there is a few thing to return if I understand it well. So I'm supposed to have a response body with the email, the username. So I'm not sure about the bio image and token, but we can we can send an, an empty value for now and we'll see we'll see exactly what it is about. Uh, so yeah, let's try let's try to to, to translate that into uh, into my tests. So this test response writer. So code I assume. So let me see if I see that in the test here. Because uh, it only talks about the response. I'm not sure about the code. I will assume it's 201 or 200. Uh, well, you know what. Let's assume it's uh, 200, and we'll see. We'll see uh, once we test here. When it's when, when once it's ready, whether I failed or not, and then we'll we'll go back. Uh, so we can do you know use a uh, Omega as we've seen. Oops, not uh, yeah this one. Can probably do something like this. Um, and then I will probably need to read the response body and I can do something like uh, read all which gives me a byte array and an error if it fails so I will ignore the error for now because anyway it would uh, it would just fail and yeah for now let's be a bit uh, Let's move that to a string, and let me see. Yeah, okay, just picking. So yeah, it should be 201, that would make more sense. And then, yeah, we can, we, we can expect, uh, so for now, I'm going to be a bit, uh, you know, that's not the best way to, to test JSON. For, for now, I'm just going to test string to string, which is not something <laughs> I want to do in long term, but it just, for get, just for the sake of getting started. And so, yes, we should have something like this. So again, not uh, I would not recommend writing tests like this, uh, but it's just for the sake of getting started. All oh, right, uh, so I would have something like uh, user. It would actually look very similar to to the request, which would be which would then have an email. So the email should be the same as before, which would be. Let me scroll up a little bit. User at example.com. Password would be. 
password would not be sent here. Yeah, that would be a good idea to not <laughs> send the password in the in the answer. And yeah, email would probably so email is done. And username. Let's go with this. That should be enough at least to to confirm. Uh, yeah, may maybe I don't want to format it, so let me go back. Yeah, again, not great. Uh, I would think of a better way to to make the test less fragile because if there is a formatting chain of the order of the keys change, it shouldn't fail the test really because semantically it would be the same object no matter the order. All right, so I've got something like this, but now there is a big unknown of I want to store this into uh, Neo4j. Because even if, if I start doing this, you know, I would read, sure, I would read the, the, the incoming, uh, the incoming uh, request and, and react accordingly. But what I really want to do is, uh, is save it to, to Neo4j. So what I'm going to do for now, just to make my life a little bit easier, I will just introduce uh, an interface. So something, I don't know, like user repository or something. And for my for my current test, I will I will not really bother with details such as with the driver, etc. That will be the next step, which would be like register user, and we can imagine it takes something like uh, and it could fail, and it would take something like a user, and of course user doesn't exist yet, so user would be for now a simple struct which would have a username an email a password and a few other things but for now that should be enough and uh, yeah so and maybe 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 then if I do something like this uh, so I will need for now, I'm gonna keep things simple. I will just introduce another another implementation, a mock implementation for my test. I could use some uh, libraries that automati automatically generate, uh, you know, source code for mocks for interfaces, etc. But uh, I'm not gonna do that just right now. So I, I'm just gonna do like a fake user repository uh, interface. Uh, sorry, struct just an empty struct for now and this one I want to make sure it receives uh, so there is this nice shortcut in Goland which would be user repository okay cool and then it automatically generates me the functions with the receiver which is enough in Golang to say that uh, the struct complies to every declared function in the interface therefore it's uh, it's an implementer of this interface and here, so I don't really need the, the variable name for the receiver because I'm, what I'm just going to do here is return nil. No, just keep it simple, and then we will move on to the repository part, which can bring us to interesting uh, testing strategies, especially because we don't uh, necessarily want to do unit tests with the drivers. That might not be the easiest thing to do, so we try to use uh, test containers or something. But one step at a time so cool and so what I can do as well instead of uh, doing it like this I can also I can also define something like user handler which would be my struct and then would have as an attribute uh, an interface right I mean I, I would have the repository in question so user repository which would be of type user repository and that way I can transform my register a little bit which could be like this and while I'm at it I could add also path so everything is defined here and not mixed between the main main method where there is a path and the, and the handlers would be there everything would be here and that would probably be easier to handle which means then of course this is going to fail so what I need to do now is, uh, you know, instantiate this struct. So let me let me maybe move that to the right. Let's see if it's readable. Yeah, it's a little small, but uh, we should manage for now. So I have this user handler struct, and uh, yeah, sure. 
I'm gonna do this users and for now I'm just gonna use this uh, fake user repository and I should be so that gives me my handler and now I should be able to call register on this handler and then see what happens Cool. so that should be hopefully enough for this first test you know getting more warmed up a little bit with the project and uh, then we will dive into hopefully quick enough within this hour to the driver part which is a bit more uh, relevant and interesting for us so obviously the test fails at this point uh, so by default if your handler doesn't do anything it will return 200 by default so that's why the first failure is there and uh, obviously the rest will also fail so we we'll stop at the first failure i believe so yeah let's uh, let's get started then so we should have a request here a request body and i will as i did uh, in the test so let me let me close the test for now so i just want to read everything I'm not, I mean, not that the error case is not important, but at this point it's not what I'm testing. So I'm just going to focus on the happy path for now. Um, so yeah, I will come back to it later, hopefully. Then I could, uh, I need to find something to just uh, unmarshal uh, JSON, which will be easier. So there is a JSON package. And uh, let me see, because I'm not super familiar. I mean, I've done it a little bit. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I think I need some uh, annotations on my struct because the, the names won't match exactly because of the case. As you can see, username as a number u, etc., etc. So let me just look for that real quick. Um, okay. Yeah, so that would look something like um, some kind of uh, of tags that the unmarshaller will read. So in our case, I believe that would be username, that would be email, and password. So that will make the unmarshalling a little bit easier. And yeah, so now I've got this. I've got this request body here, hopefully it hasn't failed, if it fails then that will be another test case, but uh, let's focus on the happy path because I really want to go to the new 4G bits, uh, hopefully within this hour, if not that will be the next part. So yeah, I can do JSON, oops, if I can type, I can do JSON and Marshall, I have gi give it uh, the byte array, and I want to give it uh, you know, the target struct I want to have as a result. So I don't have it yet, which would be user, but I want to still have, you know, this one. Again, it might fail. We'll check that later. Could be another test. And now that I have, uh, that I have this test, I should, I should call my uh, user repository, uh, my, my user repository uh, method so in that case it doesn't do much so it's not super interesting but you know just for the sake of uh, if introducing it so i would do something like this which would in turn so it could again fail but that's for another test so actually if, even if i was doing this it would, it would the, the test would pass anyway so that's why it's a bit imperfect so but yeah, I'm going live, so I'm, you know, I'm thinking at the same time as, as I'm writing this. So yeah, hopefully I will, uh, I will find some time to improve this a little bit. So I've got my request body, I am marshalling the user in two steps, then I register it, and then I need to write to the response. So there is the first thing, the status code, which would be 201. I think it would make sense to also add the header. In the, our case, we're returning JSON, so let's say this. All right, and then we want to write a response body. 
which would probably be so response body doesn't exist yet but let's imagine uh, we have a JSON Marshall I guess uh, we can probably you know do another user for now uh, response user because we don't want to send the password etc we just want to to give the, the username oh and actually that makes me think I'm, I'm making a tiny mistake so let's go back to response a little bit afterwards so that's the inner inner object but there is an uh, there is an outer key you know there is a main key called user so we can we can actually do something like this uh, user register let's call it like this I, I almost forgot which has a user user and the main key here is user okay that should be better and it's a struct yeah, I almost forgot this. So actually what I want to do here is to unmarshal into, so let's registration request, unmarshal it into this. Then I can get the user. And finally, I can write my response body as I wanted to. And we'll see. Uh, so what I want to do is basically got the, the same thing as here. I'm just going to re recreate a user. It will probably be easier. Uh, so fill all fields almost, except I don't want this. Yeah, let's call it response user for now. I want, I want, I want. So let's also, yeah, the na naming is not fantastic, uh, but Hopefully it uh, makes some sense. I want a username because it's, there is no reason for it to change. And I want the email. And then I want to marshal this. The response user. But I want, yeah, sure. Let's, let's be consistent with the other one. I put the pointer in the unmarshal. So I will put the pointer in the marshal as well. That might fail. Uh, so that gives me the byte array, which is interesting. The error case as well, another case, another test case for later. And then I need to basically write this, which may fail as well. So it gives me the number of bytes written, I think, or something like that. Uh, if we look real quick at the documentation. Uh, yeah, I don't see it here, but I think it's a number of bytes and if something fails the error. So in both cases for now, I'm just going to ignore it. And let's see. So if I recap, we got our request body, we unmarshal it hopefully into the right structure, which is user, username, email, password. From that, we get a user, we call our repository. So again, I know the way the test is written currently, we could skip this call and it would probably pass anyway, but you know, bear with me, uh, we'll, uh, with other test cases along the way, it will make more sense. And then we prepare the response. So 201, JSON, and just the username and email in response. And hopefully, so let's, if I go back at the tests, uh, hopefully it would work. Email, username. So maybe my test will fail be because of the string comparison, which is not great. I could actually, you know, maybe maybe improve the test so you know what that's a refactor step let's make the test pass and let's refactor it and hopefully i will still have time for neo4j um so 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 what's going on here online 22 online 30 is here 22 is a test 36 Yeah, I think something in the order is not quite right. And yeah, the only PTU is with, um, with a Ginkgo and Gomega is that it truncates, so it doesn't make everything super clear all the time. But let's see. Let's see what's actually going on. Oh yeah, because I think I think I know why. I think I just marshaled directly the user and I didn't put it in the in the right key, uh, so let me check. Yeah, okay, my bad. Okay, so it's uh, annoying me with this. Okay. Yeah, so my bad. I, I marshaled the wrong thing, so that's uh, already. Uh, so it's not the user that I marshaled directly. 
it's actually the registration. So because I use it in response, I'm just going to get rid of requests. That would be a bit misleading. So I actually need um, I actually need a user registration with a user, which is my response user. That will give me a user registration response. And that's what I want to marshal. And the test may still fail anyway um, because of the string comparison that is quite sensitive to, to small formatting changes, but hopefully it won't fail as before. So let me rerun the test. And yeah, I think, yeah, obviously here, formatting problems, ordering problems, the whole combo. So I'm just gonna be a bit lazy here, to be honest. I'm just gonna switch until, keep the string comparison for now. Uh, for later, I will refactor the test so that, so that it compares structures instead of comparing strings, because that's not something we want to live with. Uh, hopefully that's enough. Maybe some formatting problems left. Yeah. Yeah, there is no space anywhere. Okay, got it. So yeah, and maybe no space here. We'll see. And no space here. Yeah, no space anywhere. Quite compact. Okay, and hopefully that should be enough. Oh, yeah. Of course, there is. Yeah better like this. Yeah, even if I create mistakes, that's nice. I'm fighting against myself here. And oh yeah, password, because I forgot one tiny option. I don't want the password. I think there is something like omit empty or something like that. Uh, let me check real quick. Uh, JSON golem omit empty. It's an, att an attribute of the tag. Uh, let me check, let me check, yeah, so we want to add this, uh, we want to add this to our password tag because we don't want, so hopefully that should be enough, we don't want to marshal it if there is no, no value, yeah, okay, so test passes, alright, so yeah, lots of improvements, lots of possible improvements at this stage, a few corner cases we haven't handled yet, but let's move on maybe to the repository part. Um, so I might move this uh, somewhere else, because for now it was easy uh, to collocate it here, but uh, let's see. And okay, my shortcut foo is not, uh, is not in great shape. So let's move to repository maybe. And so it's still in the same package, so it doesn't matter, there is no need to import it. I'm just gonna move it here. All right. Um, so what can I do here? I could try to unit test, but that would be a pain, you know, try, try, trying to, to, to mock the driver API, etc. So what I can do instead is uh, one approach that works well with me for other projects, not necessarily in Golang, is to start a Neo4j container, because Neo4j maintains official containers, so that's quite useful. And um, and then you know just run the real thing again against the container and see and see what happens. So obviously we'll need first. So test containers is a Java project, but there is also a Golang variant of it. it there is actually a few variants in different language. There would be also the possibility of using the Docker API directly because Docker is written in Golang, so we can import the necessary modules. But I have more experience with uh, test containers, so let's go with this. And let me just add the dependency that I need. And here should we go? Yeah, I guess I just need to go get this. Hopefully that should be enough. It's not in the readme, but uh, hopefully I'm doing the right thing here. So go get this. So yeah, have a look at test containers in general. It's quite, uh, it's quite useful. Okay. And here I go, pulling all the transitive dependencies. All right. 
So I probably won't be able to finish this part uh, during this first, uh, you know, we have like 10 minutes left or maybe 15 minutes if we count uh, the time with the troubleshooting at the beginning, but let's see. So here I'm just following their, their example, something I probably want to do. So I would probably have some kind of before each where I start the, where, when I start the container and then when the container is up, I can, um, you know, I can instantiate my actual repository, which does not exist yet, uh, test register user and check directly in my graph uh, whether, whether or not uh, this user has been created. So in 10 minutes sounds a bit, uh, yeah, it sounds a bit ambitious. <laughs> I'm not sure I will be able to complete it, but at least I'm glad we, we started uh, tackling the new 4 j part, you know, jo not just HTTP stuff in Golang, which is not the main goal of, uh, of this stream, but yeah, it's a, it's a part one, right? So there has to be, there has to be some setup to do before we can get forward. Uh, so yeah, let's go with describe as usual. And let's see how far we can go. And again, dot import, not normal import. Sorry about that. Uh, user repository. Oops, cannot type. Repository. Okay. And what do I want to do here? I want to register. Yeah, registers user or something like this. So what am I going to do here? So I probably, so for now I'm going to put everything in the tests, but there is something like test containers request, it seems. I'm just, you know, looking at their readme at the same time. Container requests, I want, um, maybe not fill all fields because that would be a bit too much, but probably, so I want Neo4j, so that would pick the latest. For now that's good enough. Uh, we can be a bit smarter about this later, like pick a specific version and or, you know, enterprise edition, community edition. And uh, let's do this, expose ports. Uh, so we we'll probably want to expose. I'm just, you know, reading at the example at the same time, something like this, hopefully that should work. And so that's my container request. Uh, then I can, we'll see how it goes, request, hopefully my docker is started by the way, I'm checking in my desktop, yes, it started. Yes, that's the only drawback, I mean, there is no magic, uh, you need you need docker, you need at least a docker daemon running on your machine if you run a test containers test, that's the only prerequisite. So yeah, just, uh, just a thing to be uh, mindful of. And again, test containers generic uh, container, so I will give it uh, some execution context, for now let's give it this, context, all right, and I need also to give, uh, so let's see, yeah, generic container request, all right, so I'm just really following blindly the readme here, I've not used it very often, I've used it a little bit, so I'm not, I don't remember everything by heart, uh, so container request is container request, request, sorry, and I want it to start. Uh, yeah, sounds good, that could fail of course, that gives me my uh, Neo4j container, that gives me an error. Uh, so yeah, I guess because we are in a test, we could write already that we don't expect any errors because we are an optimistic bunch to be nil, like maybe something like this. And then at some point when the test is done, so we can use differ function, which basically uh, is triggered whenever this enclosing scope uh, ends. So in our case, that's an anonymous function of the test. So basically when the test is done running, we can, we can defer that. But we can convert that later into, you know, the after, before, before, after hooks and, uh, and not use defer afterwards, but let's see. Uh, we probably want this, giving the same execution context. And yeah, okay, so that's a pain, but no, let's keep it simple for now. In, uh, Goland is not super happy about this because there is an error. 
that can happen when the terminant is called that we don't handle here, uh, but it's going to make the code a bit verbose. So yeah, let's ignore this for now and try to go. Um, and then finally, we want probably the address from this. And the address would be something like uh, neo4j.host, I think. Yeah, giving the context. Which could fail, but again, uh, yeah, host sounds good. Just gonna copy that. Like something like should get host. Oops, cannot type. Uh, and then I want the port as well, because it maps random port to the actual target port. So you, I mean, the host is probably optional in our, in most of cases because it should be local host. But the port you have to you have to get it this way with this mapped port function. Um, so you give it the symbolic name, like which is uh, the target port. In my case, it would be say, this one, and that will give you the actual random port that is uh, open. Well, that part is actually completely necessary. So the code is a bit ugly at this moment, but we will arrange it. And what else? What else? What else? Yeah. So you know what? For now. Let's uh, let's do something ju just to see whether that that whole plumbing works, and that probably be, yeah. So let's just do sprintf. Sorry, sprintf addresses. So port is it an? Oh yeah, it's a, okay. It's a weird thing. Host port dot yeah int so I'll fix that just to make sure uh, the setup works and then we can move on so it will be probably in the next live stream I'm sorry I, I wish I could have got to that part uh, earlier but uh, at least at least we're getting started so so hopefully I have not uh, wasted your entire time for this live stream uh, so let's see how it looks like. I, I just want to see at least whether the address looks uh, sensible or whether maybe there is an error because maybe I missed something in the setup. And we'll probably stop there for now. And uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll continue then next week on on working on the actual driver part uh, with the go driver and the testing. And I don't see much, which is a bit strange. So let's see, and you can see logs, it's starting the container. So this uh, extra container is basically doing some kind of garbage collection. So whenever your test is done and your image is not used anymore, it will automatically kill it for you. So you don't have to manage that, it's done for you. So don't be surprised if you see uh, if you see some extra image there. And yeah, okay, it seems to work okay. So yeah, so we have Two minutes, so I'm probably not going to start uh, writing the actual implementation. I will probably stop there. Um, so thanks again for everyone for attending. It was my first live stream, so it was a bit chaotic uh, at the beginning, but my great colleagues helped me a lot set up and troubleshoot the issues. Hopefully the stream was still watchable today. Um, so what we've learned so far is, uh, you know, what the, what the application is about. So, you know, this is a medium clone that we are building. Uh, spec by spec so to say so we just started the register one and we're just touching the um, neo4j part so we spend most of the stream uh, you know starting with the implementation of the function handler but the function handler in intern must use somehow the driver to persist the user so we are just starting that part now and hopefully we'll continue uh, we'll continue there in the next live stream and yeah so Thanks again for uh, for watching. Apologies for the newbie mistakes. It's my f it's my first ever live stream, so I'm not really used to that exercise. Hopefully, I will improve over time. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed and, and learned some things in the way I learned some things for sure. You know, that, that I've not used test containers go uh, a lot, so hopefully, hopefully, you learned a few things too. And uh, yeah, so. If that's interesting to you, uh, see you next week. And uh, yeah, I will do a recap anyway if uh, if some new people attend. So thank you, thanks a lot, and uh, then see you next week. Bye bye.